body, we are starting the workshop, two day workshop on innovative practices in BDS and food administration. In that, we have Sri D. Chakrapani, Director SIPS. Sir C. C. M. Bachwath, Additional Chief Secretary, Commerce and Industries Department, and Food Processing and Horticulture Department. Sri uh, Dr. Anup Kumar Chandu, Additional Chief Secretary and Director General of ATI, and Dr. R. K. Bharts. Additional Director General of India. All are welcome, all the participants are welcome. We have participants from the Department of Food and Supplies, Government of West Bengal, Asham, and Jharkhand. Now, we shall request our Director General and additional chief secretary C. Anup Kumar Chandu, sir, to state the objective of this workshop. And thereafter, all the participants will be requested to introduce themselves. And then how to manage the produce after it, uh, after you have grown. Now that involves uh, in the first place the, in a welfare state like India, the production needs to be dis distributed with welfare objective in mind, so that it ultimately reaches every citizen of India. And therefore, the distribution of food in a country like India entails a far more complex form of management. In a country like in a developed West, the distribution is primarily logistic. Whereas here, you have to ensure that the food reaches also the people who may not have their adequate purchasing power. The economists are very good people. They recognize demand only when the demand is right by money. But in the welfare state, demand is where hunger is. And therefore, the distribution issue in India is not merely a logistic issue, but also to align it with the subject of reaching to the people who have need for it. And that brings in its way the question of public distribution system. The public distribution system so easily uh, say is a very difficult uh, and complex management because after all in a very vast country and particularly you know, food has to reach the pockets which are distant, which may not be very well connected also. It's, it, it requires a lot of lot of management issues so that there is no leakage in the midway. Now, in this particular program, we have a good deal of emphasis on this very complex issue of public distribution, which we all know is a very difficult problem in our country. And a lot of alternative management strategies are being talked about today. 
whether it should be accompanied by subsidy, whether the subsidy should flow in a different manner or not. These are uh, these are also associated related issues. Now this is about product production and the distribution. Uh, and when we talk about distribution, is the public distribution, and then uh, also the distribution aspect, which is outside the PDS. But we also have to remember that so that the best part of or the most part of whatever is produced can be distributed, that requires preservation of whatever is produced. In fact, in our country, like in many other countries, in fact, where the preservation facility or the storage facility is inadequate, a lot of food is wasted. And this wastage of food, it has been calculated, is of the order of about rupees 50,000 crore in India, only in terms of wheat. In terms of food production, 40% of the fruits are wasted in the absence of storage and preservation facility. And then the associated problem is that if you don't have good storage and, preser and preservation mechanism in the place, you are actually losing an opportunity to access the global market where this has good demand in, in countries like Europe and uh, the, 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 the USA you know, and, and all over, which are the countries which are good and rich in food uh, preservation and storage facility, they are great exporters and a lot of revenue can be generated, particularly in the areas where you are bound to We are bound to for example, in China, but in countries like Tripura, you have to bury the kind of ground what wonder storage facilities. Therefore, this is another very important issue, and it has been estimated that that in case you can store and preserve your fruit production properly, then much of the BPL problem can be addressed only with the saving of food. In the, at the international level, at the moment internationally, about 850 million tons of food are wasted, which is good to feed practically the starved and hungry mouths all over the world. Therefore, this by itself, I mean, while there is a great deal of need for increasing food production, and there are scopes to do it uh, alongside even whatever we are producing, if we can manage properly, perhaps the much of the food problem can be addressed. All these needs for excellence in management. In fact, it's very interestingly, the objective of food management and food administration is observed through World Food Day. That is the day when we remember food. Although we remember food throughout the year. But we, say, we celebrate and observe with a mission on this day. But very interesting, interestingly, the world has been increasingly conscious that this world, world environment day slogan this time, this year in particular, is very significant. It says, it, uh, think, eat, and say. So, you should think about what should be eaten, and what should not be eaten, and in the process, you save, you can save the environment. So, food problem per se is not limited only to the eating of food. It has an environment impact. If you produce food and ultimately waste it, then not only that you are wasting some possible uh, opportunity of uh, 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 feeding hungry mouth, at the same time you are also having an adverse impact on the environment. Because management of food waste is a very major challenge for itself. It has a good generation. It, 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 it's an integration with and gas creation and all, all those. Therefore, you see, the food administration, after all, food we all know, according to Maslow's need theory, it is the most basic need. Uh, uh, therefore, they, those who are associated with the administration of food, they must remember that they are addressing the most basic question of the human, human uh, population. And therefore, the excellent, promotion of excellence in the field of food administration, I think, cannot be overlooked. And it is this object with which this has been framed. Center for Innovation and Public Systems, uh, it's a center of excellence set up at the recommendation of the 30th Finance Commission and is located 
within the premises of the administrative staff of India. Dr. Chakrabani is the director and was very kindly come down to this is really the first uh, workshop of its kind uh, in, in West Bengal. We have directly actually entered into an MOU with SIPS and they will assist, like we are assisting in fact other states as well, uh, in, in, in promotion of excellence, not only in food administration, but practically in most areas of administration. We, after this, we have got another workshop to start, to which will take, take place of the 26 and 27. And then after we have got lined up to other, uh, other and that is going to be in urban management. Then next ones will be uh, in other fields of administration. Okay. So this is a historic uh, occasion because this is the first uh, workshop of its kind uh, with, uh, with the, uh, in collaboration with the Center for Innovation and Public Service. They have brought uh, the experts who have contributed to the promotion of food excellence in food administration. And we all have, as participants, very knowledgeable and senior officers of Good administration in Bengal and also from some of the neighboring states. And I, I'm sure it is going to be a very rich learning experience for all of us, including those who will bring their experience and those who have been known for promotion of service in the field. I'm sure a lot of good practices are also in, uh, in West Bengal in many areas, I'm sure in other states as well. And they will contribute, and with this sharing, and through this sharing experience, the basic object of this workshop namely the promotion of excellence, will be accomplished. I take this opportunity to wish you all the very best, and I thank Dr. Chakravani, Mr. Pachavat, who is the industry secretary, and also the secretary for food processing. Food processing is very, very important, because by simply, you know, through processing of food, you, in the first place, you, you, you can increase the shelf life, and thereby, as I said, that you increase your market and also the uh, save food from wastage. At the same time, estimates say that in, in India, at the moment, there is scope for about 35 lakh employment only in the field of food processing over the next seven years. And which means that the absence of food processing facility in India which is a very major change in food administration, also offers a tremendous opportunity for employment generation tomorrow and promotion of general expansion of business and the cost of basic product. So, uh, uh, in, in short, this is a very important workshop, and I'm sure with your participation, the object of this workshop will be fully achieved. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, uh, sir. Has already discussed about the explained the objectives of this workshop and now we request Sri CM Bachal, Additional Chief Secretary, Commerce and Industries Department and Food and Food Processing Industries and Horticulture Department for his inaugural address. First, the lamp will be lighted by Sir and thereafter we'll address.
respected Dr. A.K. Chanda, Addition Chief Secretary and Director General ATI, uh, Sri D. Chakrapani, Director CAPS, Sri G.H. Khandra, Faculty ATI, Dr. R.K. Watts, Additional Director General ATI, all the distinguished guests, speakers, and the participants. I consider this two-day workshop on innovative practices in PDS and food administration as one of the best opportunities for us to acquire knowledge and exploit it for our beneficial use. As Dr. Chanda has explained, uh, in so far as I deal with food processing, there is a tremendous scope for uh, reducing wastages through two methods. One is food processing, another is food uh, storage of the fruits, vegetables, food grains. Because when I joined food processing and horticulture department, I learned that not everything is amenable to long term storage. Only select products are uh, capable of being preserved in its same form for certain durations and second thing is there is not need also for many things to be stored beyond three to four months where availability is for uh, seasonal uh, two or three seasons availability is there just to give an example of onions this time which was selling between six rupees to eight rupees kgs is now selling at 60 70 rupees and all this thing and with some storage facility uh, farmers would have got better price, not only farmers would have got better price, but there would have been incentive to make application of uh, uh, addition, additional investment in capital so that productivity can increase of onions, improve, use more and more practices, not only this, apply their own innovations in this because it is remunerative if you get better price and better price is if you can provide uh, good storage practices, then demand in the peak production, peak production time will go up for the storage purpose and the price it will uh, tend to stabilize slightly on higher side at the time of uh, harvesting season and lower price at the deficit times like today we are uh, facing which is not happening so much in potato because of the same region that there is a substantial storage facilities have come up through cold storage. That is where storage is possible. Storage itself uh, in innovation, uh, innovative practices offers opportunity of increased capacity and reduced cost through various methods which is what we have to encourage and adopt because we in fact one of the chapters covers today also on uh, innovations in grain, grain processing. That means how we can get more products by reducing wastage in processing and also how we can uh, reduce the cost. That is in my opinion one of the most important aspects in this. Wastage as Dr. Chanda also explained, uh, a, uh, recently I was just a few days ago going through CPET study of wastage which has come out uh, and which is being now updated this year by food uh, Ministry of Food Processing Government of India is runs into phenomenal figure but what we need in Bengal which I have been offering uh, the other day I was offering uh, Director Safety Safe also in discussion I was saying that if we can have any study done in Bengal I have offered it to all institutions agriculture institutions in Bengal of not absolute figure of vestiges but broken down figure of vestiges what is the vestige uh, Bengal specific at the time of harvesting, what is the uh, at the time of grading, what is the wastage at the time of uh, transportation, what is again the wastage at the uh, uh, wholesale uh, trade level, what is the wastage at trade uh, retail trade level. With this, what is the capital investment which I need so that I can capture and reduce wastage at every stage. Supposing the wastages are being talked about from 
about 35 to 40 percent down to 7 8 percent depending on the vegetables. When I was reading, I was finding Bengal specific guava is one of the highest vestiges and where it's certain other products, uh, 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 cauliflower and cabbage have a lower vestige of 7 to 8 percent only. If we can get this study, then our resource allocation can be diverted to those places where we can reduce our vestiges. I will be very happy if it can be done. Second thing, sir, in case innovation, it permits, the two things which during last one, I have joined for more than one year, I have not been able to do, that is why I am telling you this. Second, which I have been offering repeatedly, innovative practices, if your thing allowed, I am prepared to fund additionally, while I know that 13th Finance Commission, as Finance Secretary, I knew that this addition was done during this year, not only for this thing, but every district is given funds for innovative practices under 13th Finance Commission, and sir, you'll be surprised, we do not get, now of course I am not a Finance Secretary, we didn't get good projects, and this is one of the methods through which CFTRA, because I brought and I am going to talk also, in fact, our people have given a ring three, four days ago to CFTRA also. I will tell you about what, because I was just reading food processing magazine uh, of All India Food Processing. Uh, I will just explain after this thing. Another project which is not, could not be taken up by us as an innovative project, and I have been talking again and again, passing resolutions, uh, including with this, uh, my uh, Kalyani University also, basically. If I can have one village I am going to lowest unit, block will be too big. What is the total land available? What is this being used for? In so far as my horticulture is concerned, how I can, where is the scope for more capital investment to increase the productivity? For example, profit, <coughs> that these are the places if I, because lot of vestiges of resources is being done, uh, I am, I mean, after study of the annual plan, I have seen this, by displacing something, putting something else, so as to avail of subsidy. Now, that is not the increased productivity. Productivity is, whatever is the best thing suitable for that, how by giving more productive cultivation, how by giving better inputs, better agriculture practice, uh, practices, I can increase. If this study is possible, uh, I, we are prepared to sponsor even 100% funding as innovative practice and this we can gradually, that is what was called planning at root level and optimum allocation of resources. These two studies uh, are very required and as far as this, uh, today's uh, thing is concerned, this is one of the talks which I am, uh, one of the things which I am saying that innovative practices, getting uh, studies of what is happening in other places will be very, very useful. Uh, Innovative process in machinery for food processing, which Dr. Ever is going to talk. Last year we had utilized, we had requested CFTRA along with other institutions had present, made some presentation in Bengal. But it was only two hours presentation we couldn't place. Then we requested also, if you could tell us uh, that which are the technologies which you have been able to uh, transfer during last three years, four years, and of them, which are successful at the commercial level by the people who have taken, because we have got that feedback whether their units are running or not, that will be very good and we would like to organize, we have organized, then again we had uh, association of CFTRA in our agri horti fest which we did last year. Uh, we will be very keen, in fact I discussed with a doctor, uh, director, he had also requested that I should come one day and uh, have full knowledge on this aspect, water technology available, we are very keen. Last. Audit of Food Process Association Journal I found very good thing done by uh, CFTRI in Karnataka mobile dehydration training which was interested that is what I requested him if we can do it in Bengal also. We are very very keen if you could tell us what are the technologies available for transfer one some, some are free for transfer some are chargeable based on the uh, timing how much time you have exploited how much you have transferred all this thing. We will be very, very keen and uh, sir, if ATI uh, can, uh, uh, as part of this uh, established desk and they can come and interact through this also, we will be very, very keen. I am prepared to sponsor even entrepreneurs from this place. Uh, 
supposing you want to organize one day or two day workshop at CFTRI or you want to organize one or two day workshop at ATI uh, where entrepreneurs will be sponsored by me, paid for by me with nominal charge so that serious people come and you tell them what are the technology available with this we can last year which we did uh, with IICPT and all these institutions CPET, who also have this uh, technology available there are lot of entrepreneurs who are very keen to know about technologies with and fortunately when I was going through your uh, site also I found that safety I am talking about that is today's uh, one of the main speakers uh, a packaging what are uh, available uh, uh, potential supplies for promotion it will be very very good it will go a long way in uh, reducing vestiges through processing through storage and not only this it will also go a long way in uh, uh, providing nutritious food uh, with good food values to the uh, consumers as Dr. Chanda was saying that is our duty so that people can uh, go for good food habits uh, which will help them in uh, health also. We, uh, my officers are here, uh, I have already told that they should take full notes so that we can make this information available. In addition to this, this year we have done another thing which is the first time uh, we have now we started a concept of resource partner. There were some problems now they were agreed. Indian Chamber of Commerce and Bengal National Chamber of Commerce. This is also an innovative practice which we have done in Bengal. We have engaged them as resource partners to interact with institutions like uh, IACPT, uh, CPET, CFTRI and acquire the knowledge as a specialist and make it available to the entrepreneurs as a joint effort so that they and we have also agreed that whatever additional journals they want to uh, subscribe we will pay for this whatever study, uh, widgets they want to make we will do it I am very sure uh, in fact I, I have done a mistake I should have even uh, tomorrow I will try if I can send uh, uh, these two uh, institutions also to attend uh, tomorrow's uh, talk here so that linkage between uh, entrepreneurs and uh, institutions and research. We will review this and if it, we find this is successful, <laughs> we will replicate this uh, more and more in future also. I convey my artist best wishes for giving me up uh, to the organizers and I am really grateful and thankful that I have been given this opportunity to know because this is the subject in which we are very very keen. I am sure all of us will be able to make best utilization of this opportunity and create potential for more and more such occasions in future. Thank you. Thanks, sir. We are we will be enriched through the inaudible address. Now we shall request Sri D. Chakrapani, Director IS, Director SIFS, for his lecture on the activities and the for this program, objective of this program and uh, details related to this <coughs> Director General and Additional Chief Secretary Sri Chanda Saab, Mr. Bachavat, Additional Chief Secretary Commerce and Food Processing, Industries and Commerce and Food Processing, Dr. Watts, Additional Director General of the ATI West Bengal, Mr. Khandra, very distinguished resource persons from different institutions and friends from West Bengal, Assam and Jharkhand. I am indeed very happy to be here as part of the series of programs that we have structured with the ATI West Bengal, thanks to the initiative and drive given by Sri Chandasa. This is a big state and with tremendous potential for improving the productivity in different sectors. I am happy that 
we have been able to start the first of the workshops today we will do one more towards the end of this month and carry on further as it has been briefly mentioned by both mr bachavat and mr chanda sir the center for innovations in public systems is established in pursuance of the recommendations of the 13th finance commission for identifying documenting disseminating in information relating to innovative public best practices for enhancing service delivery and ensuring cost reduction in terms of this the mandate given by the steering committee and the advisory council of sips is to focus on four core areas these are education health urban governance and e governance as you are kindly aware the advisory council of sips consists of all the chief secretaries to the states and four secretaries to government of india as part of this process we have conducted about 60 programs in different parts of the country in the last 3 years we have conducted workshops conducted video conferencing sessions we have conducted interactive sessions established linkages with good institutions like arvind aikyar of madurai cmc vellore tamil nadu mahatma gandhi institute of medical sciences vartha nimhans bangalore and now of course a number of institutions who are doing good work i am convinced that lot of good things are happening all over the country for all the negative publicity which takes place which gets doled out day in and day out through the print and visual media there are people both within the system and outside who have been striving their best to improve service delivery both in the public and in the private sector it is the mandate of sips to bring them together link up the administrators scientists technologists social innovators provide a platform and see that these linkages are carried forward for enhancing service delivery we have created a database of about 120 items which are there on our website in different sectors these 120 relate to different innovative public best practices we have brought out about 20 process documents relating to the innovative practices which have been successfully implemented in different parts of the country and you will be seeing one of them today relating to the chatisgarh paddy procurement and public distribution system we have started replicating five to six major practices one of them is the integration of medical education with primary and secondary healthcare institutions in different parts of the country this is on the model of cmc vellore and mahatma gandhi institute of medical sciences as you are kindly aware there is a slight disconnect between medical education and primary and secondary health care the second practice with which we are seriously involved with arvind i care of madurai is to improve the coverage of people and to bring down the unnecessary blindness the arvind i care system was established by a retired director of health services from tamil nadu for ensuring that a lot of unnecessary blindness in this country is removed with the result today the arvind i care is manufacturing intraocular lenses which are costing about 10000 rupees earlier and they are available today at 50 rupees 
the productivity of the doctor in the Arvindai care is he performs, he or she performs 2000 cataract surgeries per year as against the best performance of 4000 cataract surgeries by a government doctor. So they have really transformed this and they have also established what are called the vision centers where eye care is delivered through the vision centers. I have recently circulated a two page note prepared by Dr. Mr. Tulsi Raj of Arvind IK to all the health secretaries saying that SIPS and Arvind IK would be interested in ensuring that the unnecessary blindness in this country is brought down. There are a number of districts in this country where the average performance of cataract surgeries is far below the national average. We would like to address these districts, establish linkages, etc. And I am happy that thanks to the initiative taken by the Director General of this institute, we have been able to establish linkages with CFTRA, which incidentally has a very dynamic director today, and we have been able to bring experts from the CFTRA. We will also be bringing experts from the Rice Riches Institute at Hyderabad and I hope some of these practices would be institutionalized. We would be soon conducting a program in Hyderabad where I have invited Mr. Ashok Rao who has been doing wonderful work in Delhi to improve the quality of midday meals all over the country. It is a major area of concern and you would have seen what happened in Bihar and Mr. Ashok Rao, who is also the brother of Ms. Sujata Rao, the former health secretary, has been working in the slum areas to improve the quality of midday meals. And as you know, midday meals mean an expenditure of about nearly 70,000 crores all over the country. And we would soon be conducting this program. And I am sure that there will be a lot of lessons for us to take away from that exposition. There is no point in having centralized kitchens. Prepare the meal early in the morning which is consumed by children maybe at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Lot of lessons are there for us. SIPs would only be too happy to take forward sir whatever you have suggested. The additional chief secretary industries have suggested a number of programs. We would certainly be able to establish linkages with the institutions and take them forward. It is my mandate and I would be privileged to be associated with any of these studies. Document them and also prepare a process document, not so much the narration. How the process has been taken up? What are the challenges? What are the lessons? And what is the takeaway? For instance, Chhattisgarh started a program called the Three Year Rural Medical Practitioners for taking care of the health services in the rural areas. I think West Bengal also tried with a model. They have, they have run into some difficulties. Assam has improved upon this model, brought a legislation and ensured that at the sub centers in Assam, those who are given training for three and a half years give some primary medical and health care. They are empowered by law to do procedures. With the result today, the outpatient care at the sub-centers in Assam has gone up threefold in a matter of two years. The institutional deliveries at the sub-centers in Assam have gone up from 320 two years back to 6,000. The Chief Minister of Assam is strongly in favor of institutionalizing that practice of empowering the rural medical practitioners to render primary medical and health care at the sub -centers. I may also bring it to your notice that 50% of the states in the United States, 
of America have by law permitted the nurse practitioners and the physician assistants to render primary care. A number of European countries are doing that. So we would be interested in institutionalizing a practice like that. And as I mentioned earlier, technology has come to play a major role. That's why I was requesting whether there is a strong IT network in the state of West Bengal. All the gram panchayats in this country would soon be connected with high speed broadband connectivity in the next two years as part of the NOFN, National Optic Fiber Network. The way we govern, the way we re-engineer our institutions would be really transformed once we have the NOFN. We can make use of that NOFN and see that the health care education are uh, they take place in a more meaningful focused manner making use of the high speed broadband connectivity with these introductory observations i am very happy that uh, we from sips are able to participate in this exciting process of improving the service delivery in the in the state of west bengal if any of you have any practices which you think have lessons for us, lessons for the rest of the country, we would be very happy to document them, prepare the process documents. We have already prepared 20 of them and we are in the process of preparing another 10. We will take them on board, replicate these practices in the rest of the country. I look forward to a lot of uh, meaningful interactions with the government of West Bengal and we are very happy that we are part of this program. Thank you very much. Thanks to Chakravarti sir for his valuable address. Now I request Dr. R. K. Box for his Thanksgiving program. Today it has been a historic day for us. We have started collaboration with SIPS, which is under ASCII Center of Excellence. I must thank all of you to make it possible within the incessant rain starting from yesterday we were very much worried whether it would be possible for all of you to reach safely and start training on time nevertheless it was slightly delayed but we made it and we have made it rather nicely I must tell two three things before we start you have heard Dr. Chikpani, Dr. Chanda, Mr. Bachavat about the importance of the workshop one thing I must tell you, there is a lot of effort in organizing this workshop. So please make full use of the workshop. Full use means please ask the questions. All of you have been in the field for quite some time, about 20 to 25 years. I can safely presume on an average. You have seen it all. Whatever, whatever there is in the books and the presentations, you have seen it all. You have seen in the past 25 years, there have been tremendous improvement in the procurement, distribution, rationing and other, all other things. Primarily because of the increased availability of food grains, secondly because of the improved practices and thirdly because of your own hard work. This is where I wanted to draw your attention. Uh, last week I was in Government of India participating in a meeting in which some projects were being considered for approval. Uh, one of the things which remarked me was that this year on 21st April Prime Minister of India had awarded a state for computation of salary accounts. While all of you in government know it very well, then our state, the computation of salary accounts started in 1998 and was completed by 2004. All of us get our salary credited directly into the bank and you get your salary statement printed computerized form and it is very very easy thing. But this year another state was awarded because they had documented, formalized and presented it for award. Therefore, they were awarded, we could not get because we never presented our study. So you all of you have been in the fields doing the wonderful things. As I told you, the availability of food gain has increased so much so that people don't actually, most of, some of the people don't actually go to Russian shops to pick up their, off is limited. 
Why? Because availability is as good as in open market. Therefore, they don't go to Russian shops. These things have been possible because of hard work and many of the things which you have discovered, improved upon. These are called best practices and innovations. So please try to document best practices and innovations. Please bring to our notice. We will take help of ASCII, we will help, take help of SIPs, we will take help of other institutions also to formalize and document these practices so that we can bring these things to national level focus. Not only to get award from the Prime Minister but also to share the knowledge. Like today you will be seeing the presentation of uh, Chhattisgarh, how Chhattisgarh has improved their public distribution system. But we have also so many things to share so that our country progresses, so that all of us are benefited by the sharing of knowledge. Also about the food processing industries, in the same meeting one of the project was being considered for approval was a project by Karnataka government. In it, there is a district called Kolar district where it is really a center for tomato production. I think one of the highest tomato production is in Kolar. They were submitting to government of India a project about how to dump tomato in such a way that it is least environment toxic. It's not the project about increasing the production. How to dump the surplus, potato, surplus tomato in such a way, right now they are doing it in trenches, but it gives a lot of bad odor, it is environment not friendly, it pollutes central environment, etc. etc. So their project was how to dump it safe way so that it doesn't affect the environment. So look at the look at the contrast. Here we are considering thing how to dump and, and on the other hand we can make use of this huge quantity which is being wasted. In our state also, as Mr. Bachawar told you, 40, about 40% 40 of uh, the things which get wasted can be used fruitfully, can be utilized and can be used to feed the hungry mouths as our director general told. So I just wanted to emphasize again to make full use of the workshop. Today you are having excellent presentations. There are scientists, there are experts of the subject. Please make full, of, full use of this opportunity for these two days. In the end, we will have uh, discussions about the outcome of the workshop presided by Mr. Anil Verma, who is Secretary Food and Commissioner Food. I want to especially thank our Director General, who is taking pains to even present in this workshop. It is at his initiative that workshop is possible. With his collaboration uh, with SIPS, I thank Mr. D. Chakpani for his support in organizing the workshop. I also thank faculty members who have come all the way from Hyderabad, from Mysore, from all other places. I especially thank our Additional Chief Secretary, Food Processing Industries and Horticulture Department, Mr. Bajavat, who despite this inclement weather made it, in, made it here. And all of you who are here, and especially my colleagues in organizing this kind of workshop and giving this effort a success. Please make use of the workshop and without directing further, I will invite you all of you to have inaugural tea and then we will start taking the session. Thank you very much. Sir, uh, now we introduce our guest faculty coming from different states of India. Sri uh, A.K. Shomshekhar. He is the technical director of NIC Chhattisgarh State Center. And thereafter, Sri, uh, Dr. H. Umesh Hebba, principal scientist, Department of Food Engineering, CFTRA, Mysore. And Sri Srinivas, senior principal scientist, GST Department, CFTRA, Mysore. And I would request all the participants to give their brief self-introduction. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. I'm Chief Good morning, sir. 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 I am B.A. Mitro, Food and Supply Department. Good morning, sir. Uh, I am Shamal Chandra Mandal, Private Secretary to the Minister in Food and Supplies Department. Sir, 
गुड मॉर्निंग सर आई एम अवध नारायण प्रसाद डिस्ट्रिक्ट सप्लाई ऑफिसर गिरिडी झारखंड गुड मॉर्निंग सर विनोद कुमार सिंह सीनियर असिस्टेंट मैनेजर झारखंड स्टेट फूड कॉर्पोरेशन हेडक्वार्टर रांची प्रदीप कुमार देश बोलवा इंस्पेक्टर लीगल में प्रोजेक्ट को हर क्या है गुड मॉर्निंग सर आई एम ओपनिंग इंस्पेक्टर इन ड्राई क्वेट ऑफ फूड सिविल सप्लाई एंड कंट्रोल अफेयर्स डॉक्टर वासम सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर मिस्टर माइसेल मिस्टर जेके बैतो जनरल मैनेजर ईसीएससी कुमार भट्टाचार्य जॉइंट डायरेक्टर डायरेक्टर ऑफ रेस्टोरेंट वेस्ट बंगाल गुड मॉर्निंग सर आई एम टीके घोषाल ओएसडीएन एक्स ऑफिस से जॉइंट डायरेक्टर डीडीपीएस होटल सर्विस डिपार्टमेंट मिस्टर अशोक बासु जॉइंट डायरेक्टर कंज्यूमर गुड्स बीएन मालाकार जॉइंट डायरेक्टर असिनी फॉर द नॉर्थ मोस्ट ऑफ सर मिस्टर सैमुअल सीट जॉइंट डायरेक्टर असिनी बैरक नमस्कार सर हमें अशोक कुमार सिन्हा जॉन डायरेक्टर आसान सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर आई एम सुशीष पालिक असिस्टेंट डायरेक्टर ऑफ रेसनिंग पूर्ण एंसल प्रेस डिपार्टमेंट गुड मॉर्निंग सर आई एम पूर्णचंद्र सीट जॉन सेक्रेटरी फूड एंड सप्लाई डिपार्टमेंट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ वेस्ट बंगाल गुड मॉर्निंग सर आई एम राजू मुखर्जी असिस्टेंट डायरेक्टर ऑफ कंज्यूमर गुड्स फूड एंड सप्लाई 